This is Counterculture, episode 11, and uh, good morning. I'm your host, Aaron Lujan, and uh, today, <clears throat> excuse me, today the caffeine has hit the bloodstream, so we're ready to go. Happy Monday, the best day of the week. TGIM, thank God it's Monday. Episode 11, healthcare. The title of today's podcast is What Just Happened with the Obamacare Vote and How It Created a New Crisis in America. So what I wanted to do today is begin by just taking a trip down memory lane and going back to Obamacare, what it was, what was it supposed to be, and then we're going to go over the results, the reality of Obamacare now that we've had an experiment, a case study, we've had some history with it. And then we're going to visit what happened last week, May 4th, it was repealed and replaced. And what exactly does that mean? I think a lot of times when we hear these things in the news and healthcare, I mean, I get my healthcare statements and might as well just send it to me in Hebrew uh, because I have no idea usually what is going on. I just know that a bunch of money comes out of my check and I have to pay a bunch of money when I need health care. Um, so and then we're going to go into sort of the reaction from the left. It's always great to see what these guys are up to. And then we're just going to finish off and explain how is this a new crisis in America and, and what does that mean for all of us here in the good old U.S. of A. Okay, so what was Obamacare? Well, Obamacare... <coughs> was the government stepping in and with the insurance companies and conservative think tanks wrote it, thousands of pages. The insurance companies spent $500 million lobbying for its passage. And it was sold by our former 44th president as lowering premiums and providing everyone with health insurance. Everyone is going to be covered. Sounds great, right? What's wrong with Everybody having access to health care. It sounds like a good idea to me. And apparently it was, and it passed. And uh, essentially the crux of Obamacare was they were going to take taxes. So money that comes out of your paycheck was going to be used to subsidize private medical, private medical premiums. So obviously if you have health care, you have to pay premiums every month. And for those who couldn't afford it, they were going to get free health care by private health care providers because we, the taxpayers, <clears throat> were going to chip in and pay for that for those who can't afford it. Obamacare mandated that everybody be covered or there would be a tax penalty if you didn't have health care. Uh, and I would argue that it was more than likely illegal because if you can remember way back when it passed, Justice Roberts, at the very end, changed the language from a fee to a tax, more likely because nowhere in the Constitution does it permit the government to force you to buy anything. We live in a constitutional republic, and part of a constitutional republic is voluntary trade, free market, no one it would be compelled to buy anything. <coughs> Excuse me. So what Justice Roberts did uh, more than likely violated what they call the origination clause and uh, changed it from a fee to a tax. And the reason it was a violation of the origination clause is because the origination clause stipulates that you cannot have taxes imposed on the people from the Senate. Taxes must come from the House. And as you know, Obamacare was a bill that was and had to be passed by the Senate. And it was passed anyways. So in effect, we, the Supreme Court, stood by the Senate forcing Americans to buy something, whether you like it or not. The uh, one third of the economy pretty much went under the oversight of the U.S. federal government. And here we are today. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is what's interesting about Obamacare to me is that this notion that uh, 
Obamacare was immoral, that we don't have a right to health care. I believe that nobody has a right to health care. I have a right to my life. I have a right to liberty. Um, I have certain inalienable aspects, certainly inalienable rights of humanity. Uh, but one of them is not uh, gifts from the government. It, 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 healthcare is a good idea. It's a nice thing to have. But nobody has a right to health care. Um, it's immoral for the government to steal from one person and give it to another. So I would argue that it was immoral. Now, what are the results? Here we are. We're in 2017. What has Obamacare done thus far? Well, it's added $1 trillion to the deficit. Okay. Uh, several major insurers have withdrawn from Obamacare exchanges. So as we all know, these exchanges were set up where private healthcare companies could go in and provide insurance on these markets. Some of the largest insurers have pulled out. <clears throat> Aetna's pulled out. Humana's pulled out. Some of these names you may have heard of. These are billion-dollar healthcare insurance providers. 70% <coughs> of Obamacare's health insurance co-ops have failed. Um, we are now on, generally speaking, paying more out of pocket, multiple studies, hundreds of articles have shown, don't have time to get into it, just search co-op, Obamacare health insurance co-ops, and you'll see all of the failures and that we are paying more out of pocket. My daughter, as if you listen to the last episode, it just turned two, she had hives um, a couple weeks back, and we had to take her to the hospital because it freaked me out. She was swelling up. It was super scary. Um, she was uh, prescribed some Benadryl and told it's going to be okay. And it was, thank God. Well, I ended up getting the bill in the mail. And, uh, well, first, it's, it's, I get a statement from my insur health care insurance. This is not a bill. Oh, thank you. Um, saying that we uh, paid... 20 bucks and or 15 bucks and you now owe $83. Now, granted, I think I have very good health insurance. I've been told by others that are in the know that I have, you have great health insurance. Well, thanks. Uh, what's so great about having a bunch of money taken out of my paycheck every two weeks and then I actually have to go to the hospital, absolutely have to go to the hospital to be told, uh, here's some uh, Benadryl, good luck champ. And then I pretty much have to pay the entire bill. So yes, we are paying more out of pocket. I have personally experienced that. Uh, premiums have increased. Options have decreased. Across the board, we've seen healthcare costs go up while options have dwindled, as we know, with these healthcare providers pulling out of these markets. One of the biggest things that I hear, and I talk to small business owners daily. That's actually what I do for a living. My This is my fake job. My real job, uh, how I keep the lights on and keep food on the table, is uh, working with small business owners. And one of the things that I hear when I bring up Obamacare is it is so bureaucratic. It is so expensive. Healthcare costs have gone up so much. You know, I don't need to read a news article to know that small business owners, which I argue is the engine of this economy, are struggling and have been under the, the weight of Obamacare. Small business owners cannot afford their premiums. As a result, uh, uh, small business owners uh, that are offering health care have continued to decline. Uh, we don't see <coughs> more small business owners wanting to offer health care to their employees. They are not. They're just choosing not to because it's too bureaucratic and too expensive. So that actually hurts small businesses because now they're, the opportunities they provide to people are less attractive when they're having to tell that candidate, sorry buddy, um, you will not get health care working for Joe's Mechanic Shop here on the corner of Main and 5th Street. Declining reimbursements and increased bureaucracy. Doctors are now declining Medicare and Medicaid. My own doctor, who I will not mention, he's an awesome dude, this guy had a thriving private practice. Again, private conversation in his office, prior to Obamacare thriving practice. Obamacare came in. Uh, he was not one of those uh, doctors in the Rose Garden with the, uh, the, the, the white uh, uh, hospital garb, as we all remember. Uh, Barry Satora, I mean, Barack Obama was there saying, we're passing Obamacare and all these doctors in their white. And uh, well, that doctor wasn't there because he wasn't celebrating it because he ended up having to shut down his private practice 
and go and uh, join this medical group and earn less money and have less control of his practice just to be able to practice medicine in America. See, I'm, I was born in 81. My parents are actually both healthcare professionals. I grew up in a time where doctors were highly respected. You know, remember uh, watching uh, Mr. Belvedere and all the shows from the 50s. It was like, oh, Dr. So-and-so. You know, it was this highly respected profession, highly paid. Obamacare seemed to have... Uh, contributed to the destruction of that. Um, doctors aren't making as much as they want. A lot of doctors I've read in articles um, are in debt. Really, really, really sad. Can, I should probably check. Okay, thank God. I thought I wasn't even recording this podcast. Is my head coming out of the frame? Some of you guys, I forget. forgive me for not mentioning this. You can find this podcast on iTunes, on Stitcher. Uh, if you don't listen to podcasts, you can get them straight from AaronLuhan.com. Don't go to Facebook. Don't go to YouTube. They are censoring us now. Moving along. Profits. Oh, I'm sorry. Multiple studies show most people have opposed Obamacare. Uh, a lot of studies are showing if you just look at some of the research out there, most people are against it. If you watch MSNBC all day, you'll think that everybody's in love with Obamacare, but that is not reality, folks. That is a corporate filter. Just read the studies. Now, let's talk about profits. There is some good news. There's a silver lining to Obamacare. The good old insurance companies have done well. Shocker, right? Humana, their stock is up 1,010%. Keep it 1,000, Humana. Humana, Humana, Humana. Uh, Cigna, 1,113% since the passage of Obamacare. Anthem, 469%. <clears throat> If you guys invested in, I was like, man, I should have invested in some of these insurance stocks before Obamacare if I was a smart person and had no soul. Aetna, 628% increase. United Healthcare Group, 814% increase. WellCare, 1,410% increase. Just to put that into perspective, in that same time frame, the Dow Industrial Average, up 253%. So as you can see, life is good. If you're a CEO of a healthcare insurance company, I wish I had friends that were CEOs of healthcare insurance companies. Those guys are fun to hang out with, aren't they? Now, when you look at WellCare, which is another one, that one that had a 1,410% increase in their stock, all those $157 billion in, in profits came from, and I don't know if that's profits or revenue, so... Fact check me on that. I'm not going to stand by that. Came from Medicaid and Medicare, also known as the money that came out of your paycheck, tax dollars. So that was Obamacare. So, of course, we all remember, unfortunately, the painful election. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I don't know what's going on. The devil don't want me to give these messages. I don't know. Or there's just a tickle in my throat. May 4th. Obamacare was repealed. Donald J. Trump went out into the garden and with Paul Ryan and the Republicans and said, Hooray! Hooray! We did it, guys! We repealed Obamacare and replaced it. We repealed Obamacare, guys. We did it. Donald J. Trump, the people, the pres the people's president. Well, let's look at what exactly happened. The Affordable Care Act was replaced by what they are calling Trump Care. Uh, the Affordable Health Care Act, I think, is what the name of the new bill is. I don't even know what it's called, guys, but let, I know what's in it. I've done a lot of research of people who have actually read it and have been studying this closely since its passage. And here we go. Well, Obamacare, yes, was repealed, and it was replaced by a new uh, legislation that uh, uh, will be sent uh, to the Senate <clears throat> for signature. It eliminates tax penalties for those without insurance, but it mandates surcharge for lapse of coverage. So one of the problems that people had with Obamacare and the reason why they put Trump into power, the reason why the Republicans control the presidency and the House and the Senate, and the reason why the Republicans control everything is because independents and conservatives and some uh, liberals said enough is enough. We don't want Obamacare anymore, <coughs> obviously, as of what the reasons that I described a moment ago. 
mainly because it forces people, one of the main reasons is it forces people to have health care. That if you don't have health care, you're going to get a tax penalty. Uh, well, they took that out, but then said, if you didn't have health care for a year or so, and then you go sign up for it, you're going to get a surcharge. I think it's in the neighborhood of 30%. So they're still penalizing you for not having health care. They're just doing this little move where, oh, we're not going to give you a tax penalty. We're just going to give you the penalty at the time that you sign up. Wah, wah, wah. Debbie Downer, right? They're rolling back Medicaid expansion and ending the open-ended entitlement. As you know, a lot of the working class poor and the poor in this country depend on Medicaid. Uh, and uh, one of the issues that we had with it is that it was this huge entitlement program that it was weighing so much on our budget and our deficit. It was bearing us financially. Uh, so the Republican says, we're going to end the open-ended uh, entitlement. Well, that's good. And we're going to roll back expansion. You know, we're, we're, we're going to stop growing it. Well, yeah, you know, thank you for stop going to the mall and using our credit card. Um, but maybe we should start talking about, you know, paying some of this debt off rather than just talk about stop going to the mall. You know, it's like if you're in debt, you know, yeah, it's a good idea to stop going to the mall. But what about, you know, options of actually or, or solutions, I should say, of paying off this this debt? So this new bill uh, gives states an allotment for each beneficiary or they can take a block grant. Uh, it replaces government subsidized insurance with tax credits. So if you're poor and you need health care insurance, rather than getting a government subsidy to pay for it, uh, you just get a tax credit at the end of the year. So arguably, those tax credits can be used for health care. Again, they're not really changing the spirit, the, the spirit of the soul of it. They're just changing maneuvers if, if you're following this. At least that's what I'm reading. And again, guys, what I'm what I'm going over is really complicated stuff, and I'm doing my very best to simplify this and understand this myself. <clears throat> I'm not a healthcare insurance person. I haven't been following this because, unfortunately, I don't do this for a living. Uh, if you want me to do this for a living, you guys can go to PrepSave.com and get prepared and prepare your families for the inevitable collapse that's coming. PrepSave.com. And if you buy a bunch of stuff, I can do this. So you're preparing your family and allowing me to do this for a living. PrepSafe.com. Provision allowing healthcare tax credits to purchase catastrophic only coverage. So provisions um, are there, which gives a little bit of freedom. That's a good thing. Not bad. But again, that's not what people voted for Trump for. They voted to get rid of Obamacare, not replace it with maneuvers and you know, different type of salad dressing. I'll continue. The Congressional Budget Office, which is uh, arguably an independent group of accountants that really just look at the cost of things, saying that this replacement will drastically reduce the federal budget deficit. Okay, good job. Good Trump. Not bad. But bad Trump because we wanted to get rid of it entirely. We don't want to be $500 billion in debt. Just so that we can say, well, we're not a trillion dollars in debt and we save 500 billion. How about getting rid of the full trillion and having zero? I think that's what people voted the Republicans into power at the House and Senate level and why they voted for this president was to repeal, not replace. We didn't say replace and repeal. We said repeal, period, repeal, period, repeal, period. But no, it was repealed and replaced with stuff like this. Oh, it reduced the federal budget, but we still have... Billions of dollars on the books. I'll continue. States could seek waivers for pre-existing conditions, but in a very limited scope. So again, I think it's a lot of politics. You can have Paul Ryan and the Republicans go up there and say, guys, we, uh, we uh, are allowing states uh, to seek waivers for pre-existing conditions. Because if you guys remember, a lot of people were wanting to uh, have some leeway with, with, with this whole pre-existing conditions issue. But when you actually look at the bill, it's very limited in scope into how they can request these things. So again, <clears throat> slapping lipstick on a pig. Now, and then they go up there, we defunded Planned Parenthood to all the pro-lifers out there and all of the uh, people who wanted to defend life and were opposed to uh, abortion were able to get some 
talk from the conservatives, talk. We defunded Planned Parenthood. No, 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 no. You didn't defund Planned Parenthood. You took four hundred and fifty billion that was given to Planned Parenthood, and you took away three hundred and ninety million for one year. Why are you guys doing this? Okay, so it's not a full defund. Is it in the right direction? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, great. Let's save some lives. That's some good news. But it's not defunding Planned Parenthood the way that it's being sold. <coughs> okay, here comes the nasty stuff, guys. Um, for those of you who um, have sensitive stomachs and uh, don't want to hear explicit content, now's the time to turn off this podcast. So I'll pause and take a drink while everybody shuts me off. Okay, here comes the nasty stuff. If your kids are in the room, cover their ears. The Congressional Budget Office is saying $24 million will now be without health insurance as a result. Okay. $600 billion in tax cuts to corporations and the rich. Millionaires, those making a million dollars or more, will receive a $50,000 tax break um, as a result of this appeal. Guaranteed issue. That's something that we had with Obamacare. It basically means that it's going to force insurance companies by law, by the force of government, to issue, policy, issue policies to anyone who applies. So we still have the guaranteed issue clause. The 400 richest families in America will see a tax cut of $7 million a year on average. Insurance companies will receive a $145 billion in tax breaks over 10 years with this new Trump care. Hashtag Trump care. The elderly, those that are, those that rely heavily on Medicare, insurers can increase their Medicare costs up to thirteen thousand dollars a year per elderly person. They don't make money anymore. They're retired. These people are elderly. How are they gonna afford? They're up to $13,000 a year increases in their Medicare, the one thing that they rely on the most, which is healthcare costs. If you're young, when I was in my 20s, I didn't even think about healthcare. Well, give me the cheapest thing. I don't, I don't need it. When you're 75, 80 years old, that's all you're thinking about. Okay, $13,000 increase with this new replacement bill. Drug, drug companies. <clears throat> Molly Parker sits. Molly Parker sits. Drug companies, excuse me. I've been listening a little bit of future. I shouldn't be doing that. 25 billion in tax breaks to the drug companies. And to you guys, the average person out there, more than likely those listening to this podcast who work hard, who pay for health insurance, who are moms and dads like me and got kids, 15 to 20% increase in premiums. Ouch, I don't wanna pay anymore in healthcare. It's supposed to increase according to the CBO, even the New York Times is confirming this. You know, Carlos Slim's blog, the New York Times, the toilet paper <clears throat> on record. 15 to 20% higher premiums in 2019 and 2020. And last but not least, here's the silver lining in all of this. The poor and downtrodden insurance companies, you know, the ones that we all care about, the ones that keep us up at night. I wonder how the insurance company CEOs are doing. Well, don't worry, guys. The good news is, is they're going to see 300 to 400 billion with a B in insurance profits. Oh, yeah. Remember the Kool-Aid guy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! That caffeine's kicking in. Sorry, guys. I told you you could have cut me off a couple minutes ago. Wow. I'm fired up. Trump, 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 Trump. The people's president, right? Mm, 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 mm. If any Trump listener, Trump supporters are listening to this right now, take a deep breath. Go outside, walk a couple blocks, get it out of your system. I'm not going to sit here all day and talk about it. I think I've gone over the facts. This is a short podcast. This is just something to uh, get you to work. This is not a two-hour broadcast. So last, I'm going to just go over the reaction from our friends on the left. Do you think for a second, do you think for a second they are upset at what I just said? No, no, no. If you guys follow any of these um, liberal media outlets, you would think the world is ending. People are going to die because of Ob because of the repeal of Obamacare. There will be millions who will die. I'm not joking. The governor of Virginia literally said people will die 
as a result of the repeal of Obamacare. Cecil Richards, the mass murderer in chief, the CEO of Planned Parenthood, said, A repeal is sexist. You are sexist. You are you hate women for repealing Obamacare. Yes. So in the bill, there's uh, this conspiracy to uh, attack women because, you know, Republicans like secretly just hate women. You know, they just hate women. John Legend said, as someone put together a list of Dem challengers, I can donate to to oust Republicans in swing districts. Mark Ruffalo, dear MAGA Americans, making people die without insurance while the rest of the world enjoys coverage doesn't make America great again. Elizabeth Banks, I don't even know who any of these people are, but if you guys listen to pop culture, I'm sure you do. Pregnant women giving birth is literally the definition of the existence and continuation of the human race. Hashtag AHCA is all harm, no help. Patricia Arquette, this administration is rolling back human rights in America. It should come back as no shock to anybody that they don't care about it globally. Andy Richards, F all y'all. All y'all. Well, the world's ending. People are dying. Uh, Republicans are sexist. And uh, New York Times, it threatens job growth. The economy will suffer. I talked about last week about how the left really wants to obstruct this president and, 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 and maybe impeach him. They have these incredible opportunities, but they're just so silly and short-sighted and, I don't know, brainwashed. They can't even see the golden egg in front of them. I mean, why not be like slick about it and be like, disguise yourself as a conservative or something and go after him and really create a case because right now, principal Trump supporters are not happy with this president. You guys can really have a political victory, but no, it's sexist. It's going to destroy the economy and uh, F all y'all. You know, those are the arguments. And the governor of Virginia, people will die. So that's the reaction from our friends on the left. So what does this mean moving forward? And why did I say that this is going to create a new crisis in America? Well, Trump and the Republicans were put in power to repeal, not to replace. We're getting Obamacare 2.0. People are still being forced to have it. It's just the way in which they're penalized has shifted. People's premiums are still going to go up and continue to go up. There is apparently no indication that there'll be a break from any of the bureaucracy. Insurance companies will still continue to make crazy amounts of profits. Uh, we still have the same problems that we had with pre-existing conditions. So um, in reality, the left should actually be happy because they're keeping what they have but you can see how it's really just a crowd of mentally ill brainwashed people, unfortunately, because they are upset at be essentially being able to keep the same thing that they had before. But again, it's all politics. The Democratic politicians are playing their base on the left. And the Republicans and the conservatives are playing their base on the right. Everybody's getting played. Read the bill. Letters and policy and laws are not partisan, they're fact. And the fact of the matter is, nothing's changed, things are getting worse, but yet you would think that something drastic has changed with the reaction on the left. No, Democratic politicians are playing their constituency for the midterm elections, which are coming up next year, 2018 midterm elections. A lot of experts and policy people have agreed, after reading it, that the American Affordable, the CARE Act, I think is what it is, AHCA, repeals 10% of Obamacare, maintains the same framework. You keep tax credits to subsidize premiums, and instead of an individual mandate, it mandates a 30% surcharge for one year following the lapse of coverage, and preserves coverage for dependents up to age 26 and to uh, people that are on it. So no big change, still a lot of entitlement, Dependence up to 26. That's just crazy. Um, all of Obama's pre-existing conditions have been retained. So left, you can breathe and calm down. <coughs> your, your liberal president, Donald Trump, has not changed or fiddled with any of the pre-existing conditions that Obama set forth in Obamacare. Uh, so bottom line, guys, the Democrats want to scare and energize their base for the 2018 midterms. Trump's and Republicans want to pretend that they're repealing 
uh, Obamacare, which in reality, as I exposed, they're just not doing it. So bottom line, costs are gonna go up, insurance companies will make a lot more money, and the quality of healthcare will continue to decrease. Democrats are believing the lie, uh, and they're thinking that something earth-shattering has changed, and they're gonna use that to put more Democratic candidates into power, and the Trump and the Republican base will want to repeal and defect. So here is the crisis, guys. The left isn't cozying up to Trump as a result of this. They uh, have been lied to and are thinking that what Trump did was something very awful. And conservatives are and his base are really mad at him because they are actually paying a little bit more attention to the letter, not to the rhetoric, the letter of the law, not to the rhetoric, and are upset because of what I showed you. He did not keep his promise. He's essentially keeping it which is the perfect storm. If you can use your imagination, this is the perfect storm and this is why we're facing a new crisis in America. I believe, and I'm just gonna look into my crystal ball here and say that we are facing a lame duck president, a president who will lose his base and will not earn the uh, respect of the left. I don't foresee the left cozying up to him anytime soon. They're gonna continue to hate him and continue obstructing because it's a religion to hate Trump apparently. And the right are going to hate him as a result of this. And we're going to have a government that is in crisis. And when a government is in crisis, watch out, Katie, bar the door. It's crisis time. Let's get this party started, right? Let's get this party started quickly. Wow, that was annoying. So what do we do moving forward? Well, I'm just going to leave it at this. We will need to repeal and pass it over to the states. That's the solution. Repeal. The whole stupid thing. It's going to bank. It's going to have to get repealed anyways because we can't even afford it. It's going to die on its own. It's not like this great idea that, that that if we just leave it alone, it's going to, you know, work itself out. It's going to repeal itself because it's financially unsustainable. If you actually truly understand the cost that's associated with it, political ideology doesn't even matter in this equation. It will crash and burn on its own. The car will eventually run out of gas. We cannot continue to pay for it. So if, if, if Democrats actually were honest with themselves and with their base, they would say, okay, you know, socialized medicine is still a good idea, but the current form that Obama passed is unsustainable because it is unsustainable. That's not a political ideology. That's not a conservative or liberal viewpoint. That's just dollars and cents. You cannot keep the credit card at the limit that it's at eventually we're going to max out but no we have to live in this you know election cycle where democrats you know pretend that somehow their ideology uh, is more important than um actual facts and they tell their base we got to keep obamacare or everybody's gonna die no 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 it's gonna crash on its own and so i think what if we actually had a sane government they would all come together and be like guys this is obviously unsustainable Let's repeal and replace it and argue about what we're going to replace it with. But no, we're not do, we're not having that debate. So if we had sane government and, you know, which we don't. So what I'm saying is the right thing to do would be to repeal it and then pass it over to the states, because not only is that the constitutional thing, but that's the, the smart thing to do, because I would argue that Denver or Sacramento or Santa Fe or Phoenix or the capitals of our states are better suited to determine what's best for healthcare than Washington, D.C., right? I mean, why would we want a blanket vanilla healthcare policy? Wouldn't it make more sense to do, handle it at the state level, which, by the way, is the legal way of doing it because I didn't see anywhere in the Constitution that allows the government to get in the business of healthcare. So long as D.C. dictates healthcare policy, it will always be broken. Thank you for listening. That was episode 11 of Counterculture. I am Aaron Lujan. AaronLujan.com is the website. iTunes, Stitcher. If you listen to podcasts, you can find me there. Just type into the search magnifying glass. Counterculture, Aaron Lujan, L-U-J-A-N, Lujan. Just kidding. To all my peoples in New Mexico and Southern Colorado, shout out to y'alls. Thank you for listening and take care.